on guys welcome to the channel and welcome to a brand new video so today we are playing what real for big shout out to everyone at calypso media for gifting me a key so i can check this game out really appreciate that guys um so i've not played it it's gonna be the first time i'm playing it i'm gonna load up we're gonna walk through the tutorials and try to find our feet within the game so guys before we get too far into the video take a little moment smash that like button subscribe Post notification bell, press that to find out when I next post the video. Alright, guys, let's get into this video. Get your rum. Oh no. That was awesome. Love that. Right. Oh. So, Port Real 4, maybe? So, obviously, tutorial. Control basics. That's where we gotta start. Ahoy, landlubber! You're volunteering to come aboard? Usually we have to fill them with rum, drag them aboard, and ship them off before they sober up again. All right. My name's Sam. I'm Hello, a captain Sam. here, and there may be some things I could teach you. Awesome. The most important thing is to know where you're sailing to. Climb into the lookout. Take the telescope and look around. Right, that's moving, yeah. R and F. You can also look around in all directions. Don't worry. There are no octopuses or sirens here. To know exactly where you are, of course, you need a good naval chart. Here in the area, there are 60 towns. Spanish, you can English, French, and these money bags from the Netherlands. And of course, pirates from all over the world. Oh, awesome. I'm sure you'll recognize one or the other convoy. For example, these could be merchants or military convoys. The only way to find out exactly is to get close enough with one of your own convoys. Okay. Which is not always a good idea. Check out Port Royal, your hometown during this exercise. This is the town on the island in the middle of the Caribbean. Your convoy is in the port of the town. Select it. No vessels, no trade. It's as simple as that. Such a convoy consists of up to 10 ships. But for you, one is fine for now. Until you can hire sailors and a real good captain, You'll have to show that you can handle yourself. Okay, no problem. Take a look at the different parts of the convoy. We're not sailing around here for fun. It's about trade between the towns and commodities and gold. You like gold. Right, let me just improve the graphics. Selections. Graphics. Texture detail high, there we go. So, 
little bit pretty and I take them to Select the town Port Royale to open up the town dialogue. But select the whole town, not a single building. So don't zoom in too far. A town is nothing without its inhabitants. These consist of workers and their families. The okay. workers toil in the businesses and on farms and produce the commodities. The fine gentlemen like to come up with an attitude, but it is very important that the inhabitants are satisfied because otherwise they simply run away. The supply of commodities plays the biggest part for satisfaction. Okay, right. Now select the production tab. Sure, every town also produces its own commodities, up to seven different ones. But people want more. And that's where trade comes into play. And your convoy. It brings the people what they cannot produce themselves. Now select the trade between town and convoy tab. Everything that people want can be found on the market, or maybe not, and then they get dissatisfied. Each item also displays production, consumption, and the current price. Okay, I got this. That's pretty cool. The better the demand of a commodity is covered for the next weeks, the lower the price. That makes sense, doesn't it? Yep, so commodities sense. produced in a town are usually quite cheap. Now select grain and buy 20 barrels. While the grain is being loaded into your convoy, let's see where the shortage is. There you can then sell the commodities with profit and make people happy at the same time. Sounds good. Now close the town dialogue. If you zoom out of the map far enough, you will see more towns northeast of Port Royale. Move the cursor over these towns to see the commodities they produce. Tortuga looks good. Send your convoys there. Make sure the whole town lights up when you send a convoy there. After all, he's supposed to dock in the harbor and not drift around outside the town. Now we'll wait until your convoy arrives in Tortuga. If you want to make a rapid progress, just zoom out. The further you zoom out, the faster time will pass. Hey, yeah, that's quite a cool little feature. Getting attacked by this Spanish dude. Okay, coming in. in Tortuga. No evening without beer, rum, and brawls, and no trading without permission. So open the town dialogue and get a trading license first. Now open the trade tab again and sell all of your grain to the town. Great! You still have to get used to all the commodities and prices, but through trade, you can earn the most money. For this, I offer a special course about the Caribbean economy. And there is also a lesson about creating automatic trade routes. 
By the way, in Port Royal, they need wood. Buy 50 units and return to Port Royal. There is work to be done at the shipyard. Until the convoy yeah. reaches Port Royal, a tip from me. Convoys cost money, maintenance, and repairs. Avoid empty trips and load your vessels as much as possible. Good tip. I like it. So it's going to take a lot of trial and error to, to learn all the features, all the, all the stuff I need to know, but we're going to get there so far, guys. I think the game is pretty sick. Let me know in the comments down below what you think. Let's continue this tutorial. Okay, we have the wood delivered to Port Royal. Port Royal! The smell of seaweed, old fish, and hope for prosperity. Zoom in on the town until you see the shipyard and select it. Convoys that are on the road a lot, the shells have to be scraped off regularly. And that's what the shipyard is for. But you can also get a new barge here if you need more cargo space. Buy a new vessel and get out of here for now. New vessel purchased. Your vessel is still in the shipyard, and you can't even see it. You have to add it to a convoy first, or convert it into a new one. Right. We do that at the lighthouse. Select it. On the left, you can see the selected convoy and your unused vessels on the right. By selecting a vessel, it switches size. That way you can enlarge, reduce, or dissolve convoys. If no convoy is selected, you can create a new convoy with free vessels. Now add your new vessel to the existing convoy. Not bad for a landlubber. The basics are in place. One more thing. Whenever you come across one of these info icons, you can use it to open the appropriate pages in the manual for Caribbean merchants. Try it. The info icon will always Perfect. bring you to the right place in the manual. You can also open the manual at any time and just browse through it. Useful. All right, you've got the basics down, I hope. But there's a lot of people out there just waiting to make a rookie like you walk the plank. So I'm recommending my other classes as well. Don't worry, they're shorter. Tutorial complete. Let's go. That was very good. Next. All rested up and ready for the Caribbean economy? Let's go. First, select your convoy in the harbor of Port Royal. Is that clear? Check the hold of your convoy to see what you just loaded. We'll need it later. A lot of beer. Beer is important. Does not make you as drunk as rum and not as sick as spoiled water. Now open the town dialogue of Port Royal. To do so, select the whole town from a greater distance. Or, if the camera is close by, the town hall or undeveloped areas. Here you can see the inhabitants who live here and have to be taken care of. About one quarter of them are workers. Some of what they produce can be traded with other towns. Below you can see which cultivation and mining commodities can be produced in the town and how efficient such a production would be. Handicrafts such as clothing can be produced equally well in all towns. 
People always ask for all commodities, and the variety of commodities affects the satisfaction. In small settlements, however, simple commodities are more important. If the town grows, the inhabitants become more demanding, and the upscale commodities becomes more important. He did kind of touch on this in the last tutorial, my dude. Now switch to the production tab to see the production of the town. Each town can produce a maximum of seven different commodities. Here you can see what is produced in Port Royal per day. This is much more than the inhabitants themselves need. The surplus can then be traded with other towns. Your businesses will be here later. Perfect. Now switch to the trade between town and convoy tab to see the commodities on the town's market. Here you can see all commodities that are available, sorted by their importance for the inhabitants. The first column shows the fill level of a commodity. This is the ratio of supply to demand. From two green bars on, a commodity is no longer scarce. From four bars on, it is in abundance. Here sense. you can see how many commodities are in stock at the market of the town and in the selected convoy. The convoy must of course be anchored in the harbor of the same town. By buying and selling, you move commodities between the town and the convoy. Here you can see what the town produces and consumes. This includes commodities that serve as raw material for other products. Compare stock and fill level. The longer the stock lasts, the more secure and satisfied the citizens feel. Nice. The price of a commodity changes constantly because it depends on supply and demand. The higher the fill level, the lower the price. For the beginning, you should remember, buy from two green bars, sell until two green bars. Got you. The last column shows the average price you paid for a commodity. Of course, you should always sell a commodity at a higher price. Take a look at the price of beer. The average price of your loaded commodities is lower than the current price in the town. People want beer, and you can give it to them. To do this, select the commodity and slowly move the amount from right to left. You can see how the stock and the fill level of the town increases and the price per unit decreases. Now sell your beer supply to the town and close the town dialogue. Have some beer, town. Very nice. Now show what you have learned. There's an abundance of grain in Port Royal right now. Buy at least 100 barrels. Commodities are on board. Now you need a destination. I recommend Port-au-Prince, east of Port Royal. Set up your convoy there. Open the town dialogue and get a trade license. Then you sell the grain to the town. We got this. Port-au-Prince, here we come. at our destination. A trading license, not forget that. Once we're there, Okay, we made it. 
time. Excellent. That was my Caribbean economy crash course. It's Oops. Let's go on to convoy management. So all the trading of goods, that will make sense to me now. Nice. You want to sail comfortably over the sea and enjoy the wind and waves? Then you're in the wrong place. I want to teach you how to organize your convoys so that they yield more profit for you. And we'll start right away. Choose your convoy that anchors at Port Royale. Here you can see if the convoy has additional sailors. You can hire these via the trade dialogue if there are workers available in a town. Sailors are only needed by your combat vessels during naval battles. Okay. The total cool. number of cannons of the convoy is displayed here. A convoy can only fight in naval battles if it has combat vessels, because only these vessels have cannons. If there is a battle, the sailors of the convoy will be distributed among the combat vessels. Oh, you yeah. already know the different areas of a convoy. Select the area of vessels. Here, you can see the vessels of your convoy. It's important that you understand the difference between a vessel and a convoy, even if the convoy consists of only one vessel. Suppose you buy a vessel in the shipyard, then it will stay there until it belongs to a convoy. Only then it gets a crew and is put into the harbor. From that moment on, you can fill the vessel with commodities and put it to sea. Free vessels are something like dead capital. They are not operational, but they don't generate any costs. Right, you are. Two buildings in the town are important when it comes to vessels. The shipyard and the lighthouse. Let's first have a look at the shipyard in Port Royal. Select it to enter it. You have to zoom in close enough to the town, otherwise you won't be able to select individual buildings. In the shipyard, you can repair, buy, and sell vessels. As you can see, the vessel in your convoy could use a little overhaul. Get it done. Great. While the repairs are being carried out, we look at the vessels the shipyard is currently offering for sale. To do so, select the next area in the shipyard. Larger shipyards sometimes offer used vessels for sale. These can come from bankrupt merchants, for example. This is a good opportunity for you to get a new vessel quickly and easily. Just buy the two vessels on offer. This military frigate needs command points. This applies to all vessels with cannons. They can only be included in convoys that have a captain. And people trained in this field do not grow on trees. For the really big vessels, you have to prove that you are loyal to your nation and accumulate fame, here represented by fame points. Your fame increases when you do things that our dear Viceroy particularly likes. More on this later, in another lesson. Okay. Now look at the other parts of the shipyard. You can sell vessels which you don't need anymore and order the construction of vessels. However, this always takes a while and there must be enough building material available at the town's market before the shipyard can start the construction. To build new convoys or add new vessels to a convoy now, you need the lighthouse. Now close the shipyard and open the lighthouse of Port Royal. On the left side, your selected convoy is displayed. On the right side, you can see your free vessels, which are docked in the harbor. Just select a vessel to move it between the port and the convoy. If you have not selected a convoy that is anchored in the harbor, a new convoy will be displayed on the left side, which you can create with your vessels. Now close the lighthouse again. We have just talked about captains. Choose the captains tab in your convoy. A convoy is ready to go even without a captain, but a captain improves many characteristics and allows to carry armed vessels. Unfortunately, such captains are hard to find, and for each, you need a captain's license. You can get a captain's license from your viceroy, 
But more about this in a later lesson. If a captain applies to you, this will be displayed here. Now open the captain's dialogue. Here you can see which captains are working for you or who is applying as a captain. Every captain has other skills that will improve with time. Take a look at everything and then hire the captain. A captain doesn't work for free, so don't forget to assign him to a convoy after you hire him. Otherwise, you'll pay for doing nothing. Now assign the captain to your convoy. Very good. With the help of their command points, captains can lead armed and vessels. The higher the level of a captain, the more command points he can use. And that concludes this lesson about vessels and convoys. See you soon. Bye bye. Right, trade routes. Trade routes is next. Thank you for participating in this lesson on trade routes. It could also be called 10 ways to screw up others businesses. Nice. I'll teach you how to massively increase your trade volume. Now select your convoy, which is anchored off Cartagena, and select the trade route tab. As long as you only have a convoy, you can of course act on your own, buying, transporting, selling commodities. But with more convoys, it gets out of hand. You have to learn to give orders to your convoys so that they are sailing for you automatically. For that, you need the trade routes. Right, okay. Now, click on the trade routes button to open the dialog and then select create new route. Here, you create new trade routes and assign them to your convoys. A new route does not yet contain any towns, so you will have to edit it first. This is the navigation map. It shows you wind direction and wind force everywhere. With tailwind, a convoy will naturally drive much faster. And time is money. The red areas are sometimes hit by storms. This increases the risk that your convoy will be damaged. Not That's sweet. what areas with a dull wind look like. Here, convoys move very slowly. Therefore, such areas are usually avoided. Okay. The colored areas near coasts indicate shallow waters and reefs. Convoys with greater draft have to be very careful here and therefore do not make rapid progress. Convoys consisting only of vessels with little draft have no problems here. Now look up to the left. There you will see the towns where you have acquired a trading license. You will also see what each town is producing at the moment. Okay. Set up a trade route with these four towns. Simply select the towns in this order. Cartagena, Portobello, Bluefields, Puerto Cabezas. As you can see, all the towns will appear in the list, and even the exact course of the route will be shown. However, this route is not very convenient. The convoy would have to sail frequently against the wind, and would make only slow progress. The first thing you should do is to change the order of the towns. To change the position of a town in the list, you can select and move it. You see, the course of the route is already much more consistent with the wind directions. But you can optimize the route even more because it runs through an area with little wind. Select the route at the marked position and move it up to the other marker outside the calm. Right. And see how this reduces the duration of the trip. You can certainly improve the route in other places to take better account of the wind 
avoid potential storms, or avoid shallow water and cliffs. Feel free to experiment. Then select the town of Cartagena in the list to set the commands for that town. Of course, your people need to know what to buy, cool. what to sell, and what to keep their hands off. So you give them guidelines, which they then follow. Don't worry, it sounds more complicated than it is. The commodities produced in a town are often in abundance. That makes them cheap, and you can sell them in other towns at a profit. Search for cotton and give the order to buy. Your people will then buy cotton as long as it can be sold on the route and the purchase price is low enough. But your people are not stupid. If there are no sell orders for a commodity, if there is no demand, or if the purchase price is too high, they will not buy it. Awesome. If you actually have to deliver a commodity somewhere, even though it is very scarce and expensive, you can deactivate this automatic pricing and give your people a maximum purchase price. But for the beginning, you shouldn't even think about such things. Find two more commodities in Cartagena that you want to buy and switch to the town Puerto Cabezas when you're ready. What do you want to buy? Buy beer or buy hemp, right? <laughs> Puerto Cabezas can certainly use the commodities you want your people to buy in Cartagena, so set these commodities to sell. By the way, if you select a commodity, the list of towns will show you where it is bought or sold. Of course, you can also set further preferences for priority, quantity, and price when selling, but it is not important at first. If you want to know what this is for at a later time, just have a look at my tips and tricks. So, an easy route is now available. If you want, you can of course make further settings for the other towns. Feel free to have a look around. When you're ready, close the edit mode for the route again. Yeah, I mean, what are these? Does this mean that they produce that? I don't know. You will now be shown all kinds of information about the root, but since the root is new, most of the values are zero, and as long as no convoy uses this root, nothing will change. You should therefore assign it to your selected convoy. And now you only have to give your convoy the command to follow the root. Very good. If you now close the root dialog, you can see how your convoy sets sail and executes your commands. In the port of Cartagena, there are now two more convoys ready for you. Up here, you can see how many of your convoys are not on a trade route right now. You can select such a convoy either directly in the world or by switching through. Please switch to a free convoy now. Now send this convoy to the route you just created. Open the route mode again. And now select again the option assign route and activate the route on the convoy. Great! You see, a route can have several convoys. This is especially useful if the That's route good. is very long or a lot of commodities have to be transported. Your current route is short and the quantity is still small, but that can change once the towns start growing. Awesome. You can, of course, change, extend, and optimize a route at any time. The affected convoys will implement these changes immediately. Finally, one more thing. The trade route dialog shows you the data of your different routes. You can also view the balances of individual convoys. Close the trade route dialog now and take a look at convoys and towns. Among other things, all your convoys and vessels are displayed here. You can also view the balances of your convoys, which are currently on tour with a trade route. So you can quickly see if a convoy is currently making gains or losses. It's like uh, there's a lot to take in all at once, but by playing through these tutorials, by the time you get to the end of it, you'll have like a good enough idea to go out on your own, and then you're still going to be learning as you play, for sure.
This lesson is now also completed. You have now learned the most important things about trade routes. By the way, if you later have your own warehouses in towns, they can also be used and filled by trade routes. Oh, okay. More about this in my course about production. Nice. Basics of production. Here we come. Welcome to the course about production and why producing by yourself is better than buying from others. And while you're at it, I can also hammer some more insights about the Caribbean economy home. You already know that you can earn a lot of money by buying commodities here cheaply and selling them expensive elsewhere. Now, it can happen that you could sell more commodities than are offered. For example, because the production is too weak or there are too many merchants underway, then it is worth considering getting into production yourself. Excellent. Sure. During production, there are costs for buildings, raw materials, and workers. But if everything runs normally, you produce the commodities at a reasonable price, and you can sell them for a profit wherever they are needed. With optimizations, you can reduce your unit costs even more, and thus increase your profits. For this course, Cartagena is your hometown. Open the town dialogue. Here, you can see which commodities can be produced with which efficiency by cultivation or mining. Of course, you can produce handicrafts everywhere because they depend on raw materials and not on geographical specifics. Here, Excellent. you can see which commodities are actually produced in the town. Each town can produce up to seven different products. Your businesses will also be displayed here later. These numbers tell you how many commodities in the town are produced per day and how much could be produced. If, for example, workers or raw materials are missing, this slows down the production. All right, makes sense. You should only produce the commodities that are scarce in the area. Because the production of commodities is really expensive, and if you create an oversupply, the prices go down and you make losses. That also applies to other producers in the town. If they make losses with their commodities, they shut down production or even tear down their businesses. I'm only telling you this in case you ever have plans like that. Good to Check know. which commodities are in demand here. Vegetables are such a commodity, and Cartagena does not produce vegetables at the moment, but could. Vegetables are also scarce in the neighboring towns. You will quickly realize that when you trade. And since vegetables are high on the list, they have a big meaning for smaller towns. So, vegetable cultivation seems to be a good idea. Close this dialogue now and open the construction menu for this. Go. In the first section of buildings you can construct are town buildings like residentials or chapels. Hey, but we'll you. get to that in the next lesson. You can find production businesses in the second section. The darkened businesses can't be built here. The conditions for that are missing. If you move the camera to the town of Necocli, south of Cartagena, you can see how the possible businesses change. Of course, you can't just build anything anywhere. First of all, you need a trade permit so that you can trade and your fame increases. Only then you can get a building permission for businesses. If you even want to construct town buildings, you have to get the town administration rights from the Viceroy. Now take a look at Cartagena to see the possible building sites for vegetable cultivation. Select the business and zoom in close to the town until building sites in different colors become visible. The plots are divided into two colors, rather negative and neutral. Gray fields mean disadvantages. Move the focus to such a field. You can see that the operation would have a negative effect on the satisfaction of the residents in several residential areas. There are no negative factors on the neutral fields. There you should now build a vegetable farm. Good. The construction contract is given. Here you can see which construction materials are needed and how much these materials and the construction costs. You don't have to worry about the construction workers 
but they can only start working when the construction commodities are in stock in the town. You can help with this if necessary. Close the construction menu again and move the focus to the business you just commissioned. In the info area, you can see who owns the building and if there are any commodities missing for construction. If so, you can either get them and sell them to the town, or you can wait until another merchant did. Without workers, nothing works, of course. Otherwise, you would have to harvest the carrots yourself. Open the town dialog by selecting an empty field or a town building. Here you can see how many job seekers there are in the town currently. They come with the treasure fleets from Europe to the town of the Viceroy, and from there they are distributed via trade convoys to the other towns. You can help with a trick here. When you dismiss the sailors, they automatically become job seekers. In order for job seekers to come to the town and stay until they find a job, the satisfaction in the town must be at least 40%. This is usually not a problem. But as towns get bigger, the demands of their inhabitants grow. But workers also need housing for themselves and their families. If there is not enough of it in the town, your business cannot hire new employees. If you really are the administrator of a town, as it is the case with your hometown, nobody else builds buildings but you. So you have to provide enough housing. On the contrary, if you are not the administrator, you have to wait until the town does it. If the town is doing well and there are enough building materials, it won't take long. Okay. Let's speed things up a bit. Your farm is now operational and has all the workers. Now, switch to the production tab and select vegetables. Here, you can see the vegetable production of the town. Your businesses are also a part of it, and from tomorrow on, you can see which commodities your new business produces daily. As long as you don't have your own warehouse in the town, the produced vegetables will be sold to the town daily at the current price. As long as your business is running efficiently, and the town is not drowning in an oversupply of vegetables, there is nothing wrong with that. Of course, you can prevent oversupply by selling the commodities to other towns yourself. For example, by using trade routes. If the neighbors drown in vegetables, you can also stop your production completely for a while to prevent the price drop of the commodities. Vegetables are cultivated. Other commodities such as iron or coal are mined. And there are handicraft businesses where raw materials are converted such as weaving mills. Here, cotton is spun and woven into cloth. Such a weaving mill is needed right now in Cartagena. Get to work! Right, weaving mill. Make sure it doesn't upset any of my feet. Yeah? Very good. Let's speed this up. Now leave the construction menu and select the weaving mill to see its production. Here you can see what raw materials you need for your cloth production. As long as you don't have a warehouse in the town where the commodities are in stock, the business automatically buys the required cotton from the town as needed and sells the produced cloth back to the town. Okay. And the lesson on the basics of production is already over. Now you know why you should only produce commodities that are in demand. Also, you should always make sure that your businesses have enough raw materials, because otherwise you will pay your workers to just sit around. Well, uh, now we're getting into the juicy stuff, advanced town development. Let's go. You have already learned how to boost production in the towns, but in towns like your hometown, which you manage yourself, you also have control over the living conditions and can also optimize the production of your businesses. Open the construction menu. Directly in the first category, you will find all buildings that do not produce commodities. They create living space, 
increase the satisfaction of the inhabitants, or attract more workers to the town. Move the cursor over the buildings and see the information about them. As you can see, many buildings have positive effects on other buildings or even the whole town. The most important building, besides the businesses, is of course the residential area. Select it because you should build one. A residential area can accommodate a lot of people. This is good because most workers have families, children, partners, old people, etc. Only about every fourth inhabitant works at all. So we need four times as much living space as workers. Otherwise, no new people will come to the town. But where do I put it? If you look at the possible building sites for residential areas okay. in Port Royal, you will see different colors. These indicate whether there are advantages or disadvantages for the building site. Yeah, okay. This coloring means that the advantages outweigh the disadvantages. Move the cursor over one of these fields to see what the advantages are and where they come from. Here the reasons are the tavern and the chapel. If they are nearby, the popularity of a residential area increases, and it can grow much bigger. Makes but sense. nobody likes to live near cultivation or mining companies. There is too much hustle and bustle. Sometimes there is also noise and stench. So the satisfaction of the residents decreases. Okay. And such negative influences even add up. Find a good place for a residential area and commission it. The situation is different with handicraft businesses. Here, residential areas have a positive effect because the workers have a short way to work. But also companies that supply the right raw material for the craft have a positive effect. Choose the brewery for once. The most productive building sites for a brewery are located near residential areas and grain farms because the workers then have a short distance to work and grain is needed for brewing. Now build a brewery. Very good. By the way, if a crafting business needs more than one resource, it will receive an additional bonus for each resource business nearby. And another building has a positive effect on production. The tool maker. Select it. With the tool maker, you can make nearby mining operations like the coal mine more efficient. I think you've understood the principle. Just always take a close look at the advantages and disadvantages yep. of such a building site. That's what the information is there for. And as always, one last thing. For many handicraft businesses like the brewery and special town buildings like the tool maker, you need a concession. You can get this from your Viceroy when you have enough fame. We will talk about this in the next lesson. The Viceroy, let's go. Welcome to the Department of Diplomacy at Sammy's School for Emerging Caribbean Merchants. Today's topic is Viceroy's, the fast track to fame. Simply put, the Viceroy is your nation's no, top here. boss in the colonies. He watches you, gives you information, and shows his appreciation when you serve your nation. I'm distracted. <laughs> you okay. can always contact the Viceroy. Get in touch with him now. Here in the first tab, the Viceroy informs you about the current situation. Especially important for you are the relations to the other nations because you usually can't sail to the towns of hostile nations. Hey, lovely. But the Viceroy also has tasks for you. You don't have to fulfill them, but if you do, you will be rewarded with fame. Not unimportant, because without fame, you won't get concessions for handicraft businesses, no great vessels, and no town administrations. Right, okay. Now, switch to the fame tab. As you can see, your current fame in England is quite capable of improvement. 
but this is normal because you are still at the beginning of your career. If you have collected enough fame, you will receive a fame point, which you can exchange with the Viceroy for certain privileges. Okay, that's cool. England regularly sends treasure fleets from Europe to the town of the Viceroy to collect colonial commodities. Here you can see how many commodities the fleet would like to take with them next time, and how many of them you have sold in Port Royal. This is a double deal for you, Good for your wallet and good for your reputation. You're right. If you have a fame point in stock and enough workers in a town, you can ask the Viceroy to manage a town. Then everything will be done your way. No house or business will be built without your permission. In the end, a town will be built according to your ideas. I like it. Now, open the next section. Life would, of course, be much easier without our European neighbors. Here you can find out which lousy creatures are their viceroys and where they live. Thank God you only deal with your own viceroy. It is not your job to confront these sad figures with the finesse of English diplomacy. Now, on to the next section. Pirates. Oh, All Caribbean pirates the viceroy learns about are listed here. It is for your own fame and freedom to hunt down these ungodly spawn. Nice. Should you ever manage to track a pirate convoy to its hideout, you can actually smoke it out and gain even more prestige. Now, proceed to the last section, the concessions. Of course, not just any merchant can open a brewery on a whim. For handicraft businesses, okay. combat vessels, and special town buildings, you need the approval of your viceroy. This also applies to any captain you want to hire. For each fame point, you can get a concession here. Right, okay. You got it? Then congratulations on the successful completion of this course. Look around a little more, and this lesson will end. Boom, okay, naval battles. Now we're getting juicy. The acrid smell of gunpowder steam and the crashing of bursting tailgates. Where there are pirates and enemy military convoys, there are naval battles. To make your first battle, not your last, there's this lesson. To get started, select your convoy. It's anchored south of Port Royal. There are three types of convoys you can attack. First of all, there's pirates. You can always attack them. Your viceroy will be happy, and accordingly, your fame will rise. Okay, good. If you want to act like a pirate, you have to raise the black flag on your convoy and disguise yourself as a pirate. In this mode, you can also attack friendly convoys, but this will damage your reputation with the viceroy. And thirdly, there are convoys of other nations when there is war with them. If you got yourself a letter of marquee beforehand, such attacks are legal because you can then act on behalf of the Viceroy. It's called politics. Okay. Here you can activate the convoy's patrol mode. In this mode, the convoy monitors its surroundings at sea and attacks all enemy convoys on its own. Activate the mode now. Soon the pirate Calico Jack will pass by here and your convoy will attack him. Then you can choose if you want to join the fight or if you want your convoy to fight on its own. Oh wow, here we go. This side will alert you to an incipient naval battle. Select it in time to join the battle. If you wait too long, the battle will be fought automatically. Here you will be informed about the convoys that are going to fight against each other. On the left is always your convoy. On the right, the convoy of the opponent. The most important factor is the approximate fighting strength of the convoys, because usually the stronger convoy will win. Pirates often have no interest in destroying a convoy completely. They want commodities, and they cannot plunder a destroyed convoy or bankrupt merchants a second time. So if things turn bad, it is advisable to simply capitulate. Now, choose that you want to participate in the battle. I don't know if I do. Uh-oh. You are Here now in the middle of a battle and you can get involved. 
The data of your convoy is displayed on the left, the data of your opponent on the right. Your vessels are shown below. The naval battle will take place in rounds. Each round, all vessels have a turn once. This also means, for example, that if you have more vessels than your opponent, you will have more turns. Hey, we got this. Like civilization kind of fighting. When it is your turn, one of your vessels is selected and highlighted in the display. If you have other vessels that have not performed any actions this round, you may select another vessel instead. On your active vessel, the hit points are displayed here. Yep. The more sections the bar contains, the more hit points a vessel has. If a vessel loses all hit points, it sinks. In addition, your active vessel will also show how much damage a broadside is likely to cause. The cannons play an important role here, but also the sailors. If the number of sailors falls below half of the maximum possible, the damage is reduced as well. Here, the effective strength of the crew is displayed. It is mainly determined by the sailors on the vessel, but also the type of vessel plays a role. The strength of the crew is important in naval boarding. The greater the superiority of a crew, the greater the probability of success in naval boarding. Each vessel has movement points, depending on the type of vessel. For each movement point, a vessel can move one field in its direction of travel. The maneuvering points of a vessel are also dependent on the type of vessel. A turn of 30 degrees costs one point, so a full turn would require 12 points. However, a vessel may use a maximum of four points per field. Don't worry, before you make a move, the costs will be displayed. Yep, see that? The fields that your vessel can reach are marked green. Now select one of these fields to move your vessel. You can also move your vessel several times per turn, as long as it still has enough points. I mean, is that a risky move? Maybe. As soon as you do not want to or cannot perform any more actions with the current vessel, select End Turn to end the turn for the current vessel. Then your vessel cannot be selected anymore this round. Now it is the turn of Calico Jack. He also selects a vessel of his choice and performs movements and actions with it. Oh, he's just whooping me. The cross on a vessel indicates that it can no longer perform any action during this round. Now move your next vessel. If you select a red field, your vessel will move into position and fire a broadside at the enemy. A vessel can fire both broadsides per turn. You can mix movement and actions as you like. You can plunge into the battle alone now, but I still have a few important hints for you. Okay. Take a look up here at the strength ratio of the two convoys. The bigger the green Stronger bar, me, yep. the higher the chance that you will win. If you are sure that you will win the battle, you can have it evaluated automatically. At the moment, I have disabled this feature, but later you can see an evaluation here. You can accept or reject it and return to the battle. Another important point revolves around the tactics that are available to you in battles. First, there are the vessel's tactics. Each vessel provides a tactic to the convoy right, depending okay, on yeah. the type of vessel. This tactic can be used as often as you like, but with cooldown periods in between. If more than one vessel has the same tactic, this cooldown period is reduced. There are also captain's tactics. You will receive them during your adventures as a reward for tasks you have fulfilled for towns. These tactics are consumed when used, but can be replenished at any time. Simply, which captain's tactics you can use depends on the level of your captain. Some tactics are only for experienced captains. By the way, all tactics are only used on your command. 
so they do not exist during automatic battles. Right, that makes sense. Go ahead. I'll get right back to you. time when it is your turn, you can specify the type of attack for the selected vessel. Solid shots mainly cause damage to the hull. Canister shot reduces especially the crew of the enemy vessel. This can be important if you want to board a vessel. Both types of ammunition are always available. You don't have to buy them separately. If you choose this type of attack, the crew will prepare for the naval boarding of another vessel. The greater the strength of your crew compared to the crew of the enemy vessel, the higher the probability that the naval boarding will succeed. Right, you this are. probability is displayed when you select a suitable vessel. If a naval boarding maneuver succeeds, both vessels will be suspended until the end of the battle. If the maneuver fails, the attacking vessel will lose one turn. Now go on. I'll get back to you in a minute. One more important tip. Cannons that you don't fire in one turn are wasted. So make sure that a vessel can always fire both broadsides during a turn. I know it's not as easy, since all vessels are limited in their maneuverability. Well, have fun sending Calico Jack to the fishes. See you. I'll try my best, dude. Oh, I don't know what I'm doing. End turn.
fire, I probably shouldn't have gone through that fire. are about to die, but I'm going to try and get this done. on the ropes. We started to, to figure out this whole combat system now. We got it. destroyed get 50 pain that's awesome right so before we get on to this next tutorial I've got to charge my headphones right okay tasks and treasure map There's work waiting for you all over the Caribbean. Viceroys, towns, merchants, dodgy characters. They all have wishes, all looking for, all needing, all offering. And there are still some legendary and fabulously well hidden treasures. You just have to keep your eyes open for such opportunities. If your Viceroy classy shoe pinches, he will let you know where by a mark on his symbol. When you visit him, he will tell you all the details. Come to me. I've got something for you. You cannot accept or reject the Viceroy's wishes, because they are just wishes. If you just do what he says, he will notice, and you will be rewarded with a lot of fame. Now close the dialogue again. If a town is short of a commodity or otherwise has had some kind of a problem for a long time, the town administration can post a task. Look north from Port Royal to Santiago, where the town offers such an order. Read it and accept it. For a long time, the citizens of this town are missing a commodity which already impacts their satisfaction negatively. Therefore, there is a quest for the following delivery. If you fulfill a town's task, word gets around quickly and your fame increases. You will also learn seafarers' secrets and get to know new captain's tactics. In addition, there are other opportunities in the world that you should not miss. For example, sometimes you can find castaways in the water or commodity stashes on the coast if your convoy is close enough. Take a convoy from Santiago and drive west along the coast. There, I have put a message in a bottle in the water for you to find and pick up. Should I load this up with, what, oh, 
go. Santiago in the west. Go. Look, a part of a treasure map. Nice. There'll probably be more of these, and there are many ways to get to it. By the way, such pieces are always transferred to your journal. Now open the journal, and there, the treasure maps tab. Further parts of the treasure map okay. are stored here. As soon as you have found the middle piece, you can go on a treasure hunt. A successful treasure hunt will greatly increase your fame in the Caribbean. And while we are in the journal, open the tab objectives. Your nation expects a lot from you. What exactly, you can read here. But you are free and independent. If you can do without the fame of your country, then these objectives are nothing more than recommendations. So much for missions, wishes, opportunities, and fame. They will help you to build a villa by the sea. My school thanks you, as always, for your interest and hopes for a positive evaluation. Grab a bottle of rum on your way out. Come on, find out. Able battle training. Welcome to Naval Battle Training. This is only an exercise. Whoever is sinking here does not end up as fish food and can try again any time. What, do we just go and attack him? We do. Long range on this map.
is now complete you will return to the main menu so ladies and gentlemen that is all the tutorials in Port Rail 4 um, hopefully you enjoyed that if you did let me know in the comments down below I know it's a long one but that's all I've done so if you'd like to see me start a campaign game then smash that like button give me like at least 20 likes start a campaign Alright guys, thanks so much for watching, I'll catch you in the next one, peace out.